more than 60% of Africa's population is under the age of 25. By 2030, young Africans are expected to constitute 42% of the global youth. My name is Aramu Akufo, I'm the creative founder for Aramanda Kutual Limited. Okay, perfect. So we see very nice clothing and outfit here. Can you introduce us a little bit to your creations? Okay, um, so my brand is uh, uh, a crossover between the Western world and the African. Okay. So we're trying to have an infusion of the Western and the African, so uh, it's Afrocentric. Simple, but unique. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So, these are tunics. Okay. We call them tunics, and then we have serious attention to detail on our items. All right. You know, this is this is a uh, machine embroidery okay. detail for this tunic. Okay. Now, that over there is called kaja. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the days, our forefathers used to have the outfit tied on the shoulder. Okay. So we have a mix of the tunic with this beautiful. Uh, Ashoki. It's called Alari to kind of create that impression of trying the outfit on the show. Right. Awesome. And then this is Lafrik. Lafrik is the purple is the royalty, and then you have the um, African countries represented in front of this. Come see. This is Thai and Dai, right here. Wow, amazing. So people can find your um, creation online yeah, on the website. Check my Instagram at Aramanda and then okay. my website is thearamanda.com. Right now we are dealing with 94 million children in African countries not being registered between zero and five years old. And we are right now working with Amazon to develop a platform to easily register birth when the kids when they want to ensure that we, we, we put them on a path to economic growth. Thank you. Okay. One of the things that uh, investors from the West say about African investment is risk. And they have to de-risk. People talk about competing with China. How many Afro Chinese do his Excellency Akainde Ichalema, the President of the Republic of Zambia. We opened NBA Academy Africa for top prospects from across the continent, and we held three sold out NBA Africa, game, Africa games. Most recently, we launched the Basketball Africa League.
multilateral institutions is essential to address global challenges and within multilateral institutions. And our partnership will be grounded in candor, openness, inclusiveness, shared interests, and mutual benefits. Because as I said on Tuesday, our administration intends to invest our time and energy to fortify partnerships across the continent and within multilateral institutions. We are guided not by what we can do for Africa, but by what we do with Africa. And as the president, and three, an identification of ways to make progress within these institutions on pressing challenges, including the issue of food security, climate change, and security in the Sahel. I am grateful for the opportunity to hear directly from each of you so we can build on areas of alignment and identities, specifically the UN Security Council and the G20. African countries should be represented through permanent seats at the table. The United States joins African nations to seek consensus on a significant expansion of the UN Security Council to include new permanent seats for countries in Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean. As President Joe Biden announced earlier today, our administration will also seek full membership for the African Union in the G20. And we look forward to working with the AU, the Indian G20 Presidency, and other G20 members toward that end. Our cooperation in multilateral institutions, including that these are the institutions where we come together to uphold rules and norms. Nowhere is it felt more keenly than on the African continent. Last year, nearly 120 million people in Africa faced food, cheap food insecurity. And only halfway through the 2022, the drought struck and the food costs soared, in part due to Russia's unprovoked war against Ukraine, and the number increased to 140 million people facing acute food insecurity in Africa. Today, famine once more stalks the Horn of Africa. High food prices and high trade barriers are taking a toll on the lives and livelihoods of, uh, of millions of people across the continent. And conflict, climate change, COVID-19 continue to compound the impact of the global food crisis for all countries around this table. And uh, the challenges we face are both clear and they are urgent. That's why this year alone the United States has committed nearly $11 billion in humanitarian and food and security assistance, food security assistance, assistance to deal with food insecurity, including the dramatic surge in the Horn of Africa. And this afternoon I'm announcing an additional $2 billion in humanitarian assistance to address food, acute food insecurity in Africa. Assistance is going to help ensure that children and families don't have to go to bed hungry. And we're not stopping there. Food security is an essential to the foundation of broader peace and prosperity in life. Simply put, a parent can't feed their child. Nothing else really matters. So we're bringing everything to bear on this issue in short, medium, and long-term efforts. First, we're deepening our collaboration with countries across Africa to tackle food security. This whole summit, we've been focused on Africa's enormous potential for growth, for economic growth, growth that can lift people out of poverty and help lessen chronic hunger. Africa is also a significant unused arable farm as a significant amount of land that can be used to transform the community. The President saw every leader around this room, I hope we're making it clear, today and every day, it's not just showing will, but doing work. 
there's a lot of work to be done. This is a global food security crisis and we need to solve it together. Your leadership and partnership is absolutely essential to solve it. So this afternoon, I want to listen. I want to hear from you about what more we should be doing. With that, I'm not going to turn this over to Secretary Yellen, Secretary Treasury, to make the conversation start.